But we thought we'd start with an interesting phenomenon which is happening in certain parts of the developing world where AI is actually creating jobs. See, in order for artificial intelligence to learn, it needs to have access to loads and loads of data. Uh, for example, self-driving cars need to have access to images where all the objects in them are correctly tagged. Now, that work is being done by humans. Dave Lee sent this report, not from California, but from where the artificial intelligence journey really starts. This is the Kibera slum in Nairobi, Kenya. More than a million people live here. I'm 10,000 miles and what feels like an entire universe away from the lush campuses of Silicon Valley. How are you? Hello. <laughs> But the people I'm here to meet are every bit as vital to the next wave of cutting edge tech as anyone you could meet in California. And you have your brother living here? Yeah, my brother, my daughter, my mum. Yeah, wow. yeah. And they all supported by you? Yeah, they all supported with me. This is Brenda. She's a 26 year old single mother who has lived in Kibera her entire life. How does it feel to be creating the technology that's going to change the future it feels so good at least you get to be to do something uh, unique from others at least with my work that I'm doing I, I, I believe in um, I work for something that is going to help me not even me in future but it's going to help someone in future every workday Brenda travels for around two hours to a building on the other side of Nairobi she is among a team of around 2,000 people who work in this building for Samosource, an organisation that recruits people from the very poorest parts of the world. In some cases, that means those who are earning less than $2 a day. Here, they earn around $9 a day, and their important job is to give artificial intelligence its intelligence. When artificial intelligence works, it sometimes feels like magic, but really what it is is data lots and lots of data. If you want a self-driving car to know what a person is, you have to feed it loads of pictures of people. If you want it to know what a tree is, it takes millions and millions of pictures of trees. That's what's called training data. And it's here where that data is created. So depending on the instructions, um, you're going to uh, basically tag or an annotate um, items of interest. Okay. Right. Right. From um, the street to the vehicles, the buildings, even to the sky. Okay. Right. How's that? That's good. Is that good? Yeah. Not quite right? Not quite right. You know why? <laughs> why? <laughs> um, the item needs to uh, be squarely inside that box. Right. So if we zoom in, just zoom in. Um, Okay. Turns out no pixel can be out of place or unaccounted for. The sky, the street signs, the pedestrians, the lanes, everything needs tagging. Once the work is done, a supervisor will check it's up to scratch. The quickest, sharpest annotators in the team will win prizes, such as shopping vouchers. Samosource's clients include Google, Salesforce, eBay, Yahoo and many others, working on everything from self-driving cars to online shopping. One recent project for Microsoft's Bing search engine helped it become better at identifying different types of clothing. The building, in many respects, feels like a typical Silicon Valley campus, complete with subsidised food. 52% of employees here are women in a country where having a child can typically rule you out from having a career. Like a lot of people say, if you, if you have a man in the workplace, he'll support his family. If you have a woman in the workplace, she'll support her family and the extended family. So you actually have a lot more impact if you can impact women and allow them to work as well. While most of their employees are, of course, in the developing world, the company's headquarters can be found in San Francisco's Mission District. When I first started this business 10 years ago, very smart people in the tech world and in the world of big philanthropy said that this was a wonderful idea, but that it would never work. Lila touts her company's record on quality and security as reasons why tech firms come to them. But of course, there is a very obvious reason why these tasks are outsourced to places where wages are rock bottom and people are desperate for work. Some of your clients are the biggest, richest companies in the world. Can they not afford to pay more than $9 a day for this work? 
We make a guarantee to every single worker at Zamasource that they are paid a living wage. If we were to pay people substantially more than that in some of the markets that we're in, we would throw everything off and that would have actually a potentially negative impact on the cost of housing, the cost of food, etc., and the communities in which our, our workers live and, and thrive. So um, for us, you know, we're on average increasing our workers' household income by over 500%. That impact can be seen right in the heart of Kibera, where lessons in basic digital literacy are run by Samosource at a location within the slum. The people who take these jobs often do it for only a couple of years, but it's a starting point for much better things. It has, it has changed my, my everything. Um, it, it has changed my perspective, it has changed, it has exposed me to, to see there's these, these hope beyond just living here. Like I have shifted, I was living you know, such, such such houses, but right now I'm living at a good place. Yeah. Where, um, so it's just improved your quality it of life? It has improved it, sure. I think there's an obvious moral obligation that the companies that offer this work make sure the workers are valued and safe and protected. And I think we have a moral obligation as well as the people who enjoy the products they create because AI isn't going to be seen in a place like this for quite some time but at least what is happening is education because from what I've seen Kenya isn't just getting AI trainers they're getting AI experts